Hi everybody, this is Josh Kulp. We are learning Daf Shui, Daf Kaftet of Bava Kama. Uh, and I wanted to explain here, um, go a little bit into greater depth into Abai's explanation of the Machlok, at the dispute in the Mishnah between the Tanakama, the first opinion, and Rebbe Yehuda about the person who trips and people, uh, his stuff breaks and people are damaged by his stuff. Um, and I thought it would just um, be worth it to go over exactly what Abai means, betarte plige, that there are two disputes, uh, and to clarify what those disputes are. So Abai says there are two disputes between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim. The first one is plige b'shat nefila, that they argue about when he falls, u plige lachar nefila, they have an argument about after he falls. The argument about at the time he falls is over something we've seen before, whether somebody who trips is considered negligent. The Tanakama, the first opinion, would say someone who trips is considered negligent and therefore he's liable. And uh, Rabbi Huda would consider it that nitkal lav poshea, that somebody who trips is not considered negligent. Now there's a, a big dispute about what exactly it means, bishat nifila. Um, what what is is that exactly at the time he falls or afterwards? So the toast would explain that you can't take this too literally. It doesn't mean that somebody, um, according to uh, Rebbe Yehuda, is exempt when he falls because that clashes with another principle which we read in the Mishnah that Adam Mu'ad Le'olam, a person is always considered an attested danger and therefore it was responsible for damages done by his body even um, be'onis, even if he had no uh, control over what's going to happen. Uh, and therefore, the Tosfot explain that this refers to um, right after the fall, uh, meaning if he falls and trips and hurts somebody while falling down, everybody would say he's obligated. But if he trips and falls and his stuff breaks and he hasn't yet had time to pick up the pieces, that's the key here. The bishat nefila at the time of the fall means he has not yet had any time to pick up the pieces. Uh, the, the chachamim, the sages in the Mishnah would say he's liable because tripping was considered negligent and therefore, the, immediately, the immediate aftermath of tripping, he's still liable for it. Uh, Rabbi Yehuda would say that he's exempt because tripping was be'onis, was unforeseen, a total accident, not negligent. And therefore, as long as we're within the aftermath of the tripping event, then uh, anything that is right then, he is exempt for. Now, the Ra'avad, another commentary uh, from Provence, a uh, Tommy, a, a, a rabbi from Provence in the 12th century, says that um, that literally shot nefila is as he's falling down. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, when someone falls and does damage with his body, he's exempt. Even though we say Adam Mu'ad Le'olam, a person's always in attested danger, that doesn't include events where he falls down uh, completely be'onis, with no control over it, which Rabbi Yehuda considers somebody who stumbles to be um, something that he has no control over. It's not a negligent act. So Rabbi Yehuda, Ra Rava would give a more lenient, let's say, interpretation and say that when someone falls, Rabbi Yehuda exempts him ex uh, uh, totally, uh, even if he damages with his body while falling on somebody. Now, as far as the Le'achar Nefila, Rabbi says they also dispute after um, uh, after he's fallen down. Most Rishonim say this has no connection to the somebody who stumbled. And there's always a dispute, according to uh, Baye, between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim, over what we call here in Hebrew, Mafkir Nizakav, somebody who leaves his stuff ownerless in the public domain. Uh, and again, it's no connection. For whatever reason, somebody leaves his stuff ownerless in the public domain. Uh, Rabbi Yehuda would say he's exempt and the Chachamim would say he is liable. This is connected to their reading of uh, the pit that the Torah makes you liable for. The rabbis would say the Torah makes you liable for a pit you don't own, that you dug in the public domain, uh, which makes a lot of sense, I believe. Uh, and Rabbi Yehuda would say the Torah makes you liable only for a pit that you still own, which makes it a little bit difficult to figure out 
what kind of pit we're talking about, but I don't want to go into that right now. So um, those are two, let's say, very um, important disputes that Abai puts forth here that we're going to be learning about a lot in these Dapim. So I thought it was good to get them down. As always, I hope you join our Daf Shui live class that meets on Sundays and Tuesdays. For more information, you can look up on the Conservative uh, Yeshiva website. I hope everyone's well, and uh, it's been a great year learning with everyone. So thank you to all who have participated.